Fallout from the Oxford High School shooting is still being felt in districts all across Metro Detroit. Now, we did tell you about several closings because of copycat threats of violence. Each threat has to be taken seriously. But the question, what is the impact on all of those canceled classes? Paula Tutman has been taking a close look, searching for answers about what the unplanned downtime really means to students. In Michigan, students are required by law to have 180 in-seat days or 1,090 hours of instruction for the year to count academically. Now, students didn't get those days last year because of the pandemic, and the Michigan Department of Education granted waivers to districts because of the unprecedented challenges in educating through a pandemic. This year, the pandemic continues, and in our region, the shooting at Oxford High School November 30th has created an additional ripple effect that interrupts education. And these now ongoing threats that are keeping a lot of schools shut and kids out of classrooms is just making the job almost impossible at this point. And so, uh, you know, it's it's frustrating for everybody involved. And it's no more frustrating than, than the teachers who just want to be in class helping these kids uh, and just to see the continued difficulties they are going through, the challenges they are facing, the fear that they that they have. It's it's just terribly difficult for everybody involved right now. Robert McCann is the executive director for the K-12 Alliance, which represents the interests and education of 680,000 students and educators in 114 school districts across the state. And he says this is not just about the students, but staff who witnessed murders, heard the shots, ran with students and jumped out of windows, and even students and staffers who work in other districts with these numerous threats of violence. It's about them too. These are serious threats that must be taken seriously right now, and they have serious consequences as a result, not just for the people involved in making them, but for every student that deserves to be able to go to class and do so without fear of what's going to happen to them there. We wanna help them get caught back up, and these, these threats that are getting called in right now are just making that almost impossible. The Michigan Department of Education has referred school districts to guidance it sent out in September to handle COVID closures as a way to also handle school threat closures and canceled in-person instruction. In the four-page memo, there are no allowances beyond the total of nine so-called forgive days or snow days, but a path for districts on an individual basis to request waivers. No school or no student should be punished for the, the difficulties that they are dealing with right now. Okay, so when you do the math between December 1st and January 2nd, which is when some of these districts are entertaining back to in-person learning, it's about 16 or 17 in-seat learning days that we're talking about. And when I, I talk to educators, they, they talk about the college-bound juniors and the college-accepted seniors. These are critical times for them. And right now they say they don't know how they can help them uh, with what they need. But what they do say is they will figure out a way on the back end to navigate them the same way they did that first COVID year last year, Karen. Uncharted territory, that is for sure. All right, thank you, Paula.